This is a book ball summary of the book How Successful People Think by John C. Maxwell. Successful people have one thing in common, and that is thinking outside the box. They aren't afraid of carving out their path and walking through it alone, although it may be lonely. After all, we are sociable creatures who like falling in with accepted ideas because we know going against common notions is likely to leave you with no friends. Creative thinking and persistence are important when it comes to success. But as we would show you in this video, you don't need to be an Einstein to have great ideas. Everyone can learn to think creatively. All it takes is to know the right techniques and then a bit of practice. Let's delve into the techniques now. Number one, big picture thinkers are constantly learning and know how to empathize with others. General Electric CEO Jack Welch usually tells his employees that existing relationships with clients are more important than individual sales. Why? Because he knows that when it comes to being successful in the long run, it's sometimes necessary to leave the nitty gritty behind for a moment and consider the bigger picture. But how can you start cultivating big picture thinking? By making sure you're always learning. Big thinkers are always looking for opportunities to learn. They're constantly on the go, visiting new places, meeting new people, and honing new skills. John C. Maxwell has a handy technique that puts him in the right mindset to do that. He starts his day by looking at his schedule and asking himself what learning opportunities are likely to present themselves. Once he's noted down the activities that are most likely to teach him something, he mentally primes himself to be on high alert. That means he's much more likely to be receptive to what's going on around him. So when he once had dinner with National Football League coach Dave Wanstead, he was well prepared. So he used time to ask him all sorts of questions about teamwork and he left the restaurant with new insights. That's something you can take up too. Spend a couple of minutes each morning looking over your itinerary and ask yourself what opportunities to learn new things you're likely to encounter. Number two, set and achieve clear targets by thinking realistically and making sure you do your homework. If you want to succeed in the real world, you have to leave your daydreams behind and start thinking realistically. That means setting targets and drawing up a game plan that'll put you in a position to hit them. Consider a businessman who isn't a realistic thinker. He's positive and full of hope about the company's future. That's a great attitude to have, but there's a problem. He doesn't have a strategy, and without a strategy, his company's likely to fail. In the end, he's a bad leader. Realistic thinking, by contrast, promotes excellent leadership. That's because facing up to the way things force you to clearly define your aims and formulate a plan of action that'll get you there. Realistic thinking also helps simplify things. Stripping away all the unnecessary details and vague hopes and dreams makes you more efficient. But what if you're an optimist rather than a realist by nature? Then you should start by doing your homework. That means getting to know the facts. Say you're a business leader mulling over your next move. Ask yourself what you'd do if your revenue dried up, a customer didn't pay, or the bottom fell out of the market you're in. Spend time researching these scenarios. After all, your realistic thinking won't amount to much if you're basing it on insufficient information. It's important to clear your mind of all preconceptions, prejudices, and secondhand opinions when you're doing this kind of background work. Instead of making assumptions, get to know the facts yourself. Number three, increase your options and make yourself more attractive by embracing creative thinking. Whatever line of work you're in, creativity is pure professional gold. Einstein once said that imagination is more important than knowledge. He was right. Your ideas are far more important than your role in a company or your job title. That said, Einstein was a genius. Creative thinking was second nature to him. That might not apply to everyone, but there are techniques you can use to jumpstart your creativity. The first point to remember is that creativity doesn't just mean having lots of original ideas. You can start thinking creatively by simply considering a great number of options. There's one hallmark of creatives. They take as many possibilities into account as they can, which in turn gets the creative juices flowing and stimulates the imagination. So if you've got a great idea, ask yourself what changes you can make to improve it. Think of it like a fishing net. 
the wider you cast it, the more fish you're likely to catch. The reason that's so important is that the best thinkers aren't looking for the only answer, they're looking for the best answer out of many. The bonus? It's to help you craft a backup plan in case your preferred solution doesn't work out. Creative thinking also makes you and your ideas more attractive to other people. No wonder. Creativity is your intelligence and having fun. People admire intelligence and are attracted to fun. It's an irresistible combination. Number four, think unselfishly and you'll make yourself part of something bigger. Adopting new models of thinking boosts your chances of success, but there's also a way of thinking about the world that can change your entire life. Unselfish thinking. Taking that up might just redefine your concept of success itself. That's because helping others is hugely rewarding. Few things are anywhere near as fulfilling. Spend a day serving others unselfishly and you're pretty much guaranteed a sound night's sleep. Take it from Alfred Nobel, who learned that the hard way. As he was reading the newspaper one day, he was shocked to find his obituary. It was a mistake, of course, but it was an illuminating experience. So what did it say? The paper mainly talked about how the inventor's most famous brainchild, dynamite, had been responsible for so many deaths. Nobel was appalled at the idea that this is how people would regard his legacy. Racked by guilt, he decided to make a more positive contribution to the world by supporting peace. The idea of the Nobel Prize, an award given in recognition of noteworthy achievements in various fields, was born in 1895. It just goes to show that if you've pursued selfish ends your whole life, you can always turn things around. But the best thing about unselfish thinking is that it lets you become part of something much bigger than yourself. Number five, popular thinking is often wrong-headed. Disregard it if you want to get the best outcomes. It's easy to get caught up in the crowd and thoughtlessly accept other people's ideas about the world. That applies as much to business leaders falling in line with a company's traditions as it does to new parents acting on the old wives' tales their parents told them. Thinking for yourself can be a risky business. Stray too far from the herd and you're unlikely to make many friends. If everybody accepts something as true, then it must be, right? Well, no. Think of the belief that the Earth was the centre of the universe. Pretty much everyone thought you'd have to be mad to question that idea. Then along came the astronomer Copernicus in the 16th century, who mathematically proved that our solar system revolves around the sun. Conventional wisdom is often downright deadly too. Before Joseph Lister pioneered antiseptic procedures in the 19th century, surgeons were convinced that there wasn't any point in washing medical instruments. Humans often seek safety in numbers, but history shows that's not the best way of determining what's true. Number six, Boost your thinking process by collaborating with others, whoever they are. Let's say you need to pick up a new skill. How would you go about it? Spend some time figuring it out by yourself or ask someone already in the know to teach you the ins and outs. If you're likely to go with the former, it might be time to reconsider. Whether learning a new recipe, putting the finishing touches on that golf swing or mastering a new piece of software, you've got a much better chance of getting the hang of things if you learn from someone with experience. Collaboration is the mother of innovation. Shared thinking trumps solo thinking every time. That might sound slightly counterintuitive. After all, brilliant thinkers are often depicted as brooding soloists going it alone. But that's not the case. Innovative breakthroughs rarely happen in a vacuum. More often than not, they're the result of people working together. Einstein often said that his achievements were founded on the labours of other men. Or think of the work of brilliant duos like scientists Pierre and Marie Curie, or musical wonderkinds Paul McCartney and John Lennon. When people combine their unique talents and ideas, the results can be incredible. But before you start working with others, you need to adopt the right mindset. What's your most important key takeaway? Please comment down below and share the video if you like it. Check out these other two videos. Thank you and until next time.